Harish Hande is a MagSSA awardee and co-founder at Selco India, an organization that has been taking technology to India's poor for nearly two decades. Selco's work with solar technology, suitable financial and service models, and consistent efforts have dispelled myths that the poor make poor customers and that customizing technology is an expensive affair. Here's Harish Hande sharing insights. I was doing my PhD in the US and I came down to do my field research in Sri Lanka and India and, uh, and said how do, I, how do we look at sustainable energy and, and the linkage to poverty alleviation. Mm -hmm. The concept was how do you create a sustainable venture that destroys three myths mm -hmm. that the poor can't afford technologies, the poor can't maintain technologies and you can't run a commercial venture while trying to meet social objectives. How do you create a venture that was bottom-up approach where you look at poor not as beneficiaries but as clients, mm -hmm. poor not as as end users but as partners. I think that was the philosophy. What was the, what was let's say one of the early projects that you worked on? You define a project with a time frame and then once you install something in somebody's house or oh, I take a video full photograph people are happy clap that's done. No, he said, how do you look at long-term sustainability of a son? That's exactly why I said, like, can we create a firm? Whatever form of the f organization would be, I didn't know about it that, at that point of time, but something that is financial, social, and environmentally sustainable. Okay. okay. Each house at a time was the mantra. It's been about 17 years right. of doing this, right? Yes. So what's it been like? I mean, what are, according to you, your biggest milestones? And what's the impact that you've seen because of your work? One of the biggest learnings was that what I had learnt in um, undergrad in IIT was of no sense to me and, 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 and didn't make any sense. Uh, that we, we, we study in very bubbled environments um, uh, with very less connection to reality. Typical of whether it's IIT or typical of our education system I think and that that is what hit me on the face very first when you go into the rural areas and there's lots of and then also the arrogance of that we know it all in terms of uh, and you've got the certificate you've got the status exactly and oh. I studied for four years and I get a PhD degree a farmer who has slogged it for 25 years who's a master of sugarcane gets no PhD degree, right and I'm supposed to be an expert for me the personal success was the unlearning but also saying that if if many of the colleagues that I work with um, who are very what you call it as work in an atmosphere where degree has the least importance and if that if that if you don't transcend to that level you will never be able to actually work with the so-called poor because you always have that stupid hierarchy of our system which mm. stops you on actually working with the poor in the same equal status fascinating okay. fascinating you, you know that's on the, that's on the personal You're front right, on right. the intellectual front i suppose <coughs> today we have seen we have served around 130000 households okay. and many of them are poor i mean earning between what's say 2000 to 4000 rupees on a monthly 1,500 to 4,000 rupees on a monthly basis. Typically, any calculation would say that they cannot afford solar technology. They have disproved the myth mm -hmm. that don't look at solar purely from a modular point of view. Look at the holistic way of what do they spend on kerosene and candles. Mm. If proper financing mechanisms are given, they can afford it. Absolutely. And that's, I think, one of the in our our greatest success to destroy the myth. We have street vendors as our clients, we have tomato vendors as our clients, we have rural farmers as our clients who, who have disproved that solar is an expensive technology. At the grassroots level, you know, when it comes to application, uh, how does it work? We basically cater to very individual needs and okay, you need it for two hours because your son has to study, your daughter has to study. The neighbor needs one hour because the arakanat has to be done in the evening. Yes, we will give you a product that meets your needs. We will not say we have a product list of 10, okay, you buy exit. No. Okay. And what's your financial outflow? Yes, what's, what's the cost? Yes, in a sense, also because cost is also varied. It, it, it would vary between 5,000 to 15,000 or 20,000 rupees. But more importantly, the cash flow of a street vendor is very different to a cash flow Absolutely. of a paddy farmer. Absolutely. So the importance is how do you mix a technology and a financial product? Because we, we would typically in urban areas earn on a monthly basis, there's an assumption that everybody would pay monthly. That's not true. You go to a street vendor, she'll pay daily. You go to a paddy farmer, he'll pay yearly because his cash flow is in January when the harvest happens and he'll, play, he'll have cash in January. Next time you go and ask him, it's next January. 
So your financial product also needs to change. I see. According okay. to the needs. So for us, it's the combination of technology, combination of financial product, combination of service that you deliver at the doorstep of the client, of the user. In okay. Case. So let's say it's uh, um, it's a street vendor, it's a tomato right. vendor. Right. Uh -huh. uh, I guess their payout would be on a daily basis because that would right. be more suitable to sure, them. Sure. So how much would they pay out on a daily basis and for how long? And so and how long would they own it for? Does it mean that they own it for good or is it like almost a rental model? It could be both. It could be both. But looking at pure cost, you know, average street vendor in, in any urban city for kerosene, for half a litre of kerosene on a daily basis, which for four hours of lighting spends 15 rupees. Hmm. That's that it comes to around 450 rupees on a monthly basis that you yeah. and me don't pay for one light, leave alone yeah. kerosene, right? A solar actually works works out to be six rupees in between six and eight rupees instead okay. of fifteen rupees. Okay. So with the, with fourteen percent rate of interest, if you look at interest without subsidies, and because they pay already pay four hundred and fifty rupees a month, actually with two hundred rupees a month they are able to own the system within three to three and a half years. Then it mm -hmm. becomes an asset to them. Fabulous. Depends on the location. Depends on the profile. You can actually yeah. do both models. Yes. In India as it is today, what do you think is the importance of taking technology and making it affordable for the poorer sections of our society? See, the thing is, India is a paradox. India is a paradox of an overdeveloped and an underdeveloped country. You look at Europe and Western, it's mostly developed. You look at Africa, it's mostly underdeveloped. We are in a critical position where we can actually show to the world that we can be innovators of removing poverty in a sustainable manner. And we need to take that chance. And more than just technology, I think, see, what's, what's also happening in our country is that the urban youth or the urban are also becoming very insensitive about the rural needs. And, and there's a primary assumption that because I have a certain education, I know what technology needs to work. Today what happens is every time it's a problem that, a solution that is seeking for a problem, not the vice versa. Yeah. We have not understood what the problems are. So I think it's high time we look at databasing the problems that exist. The needs that may exist, then come up with the appropriate technology. There might be technologies that are existent. Mm -hmm. How do but how do you remodify those technologies? Is the is very important for India too, and that is why I would say we need to revamp the way we educate the kids. Absolutely. The education today for us is completely rote based. The kids are not able to apprehend what the problems exist because they are told what to do. I think that's where I would fundamentally change rather than. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great to have you on the show. Thank you, Lester. Thank you for that.